Sawiris has since taken a step back from his day-to-day -day running of his business, but he's once again treading into territory that many steer clear of, politics. He's playing a very big role on this uh, political uh, scene because uh, we need people like Naguib to be involved in politics. As an Egyptian, I need, peop I need to see more of Naguib Sawiris in different parties and he's also a role model, not only for the youth, the Egyptian young, revolutionary uh, uh, youth, but also for businessmen. And uh, there is always a very thin line between business and politics. So, uh, and Naguib succeeded in respecting this line. The people of Egypt have spoken, their voices have been heard, and Egypt will never be the same. After 18 days of protests, the 30-year rule of Hosni Mubarak came to an end. In the months to follow, Naguib Sawira set up the Free Egyptians Party. It served as an alternative to the Islamist movement of the Muslim Brotherhood, which was fast gaining popularity in a post-Mubarak Egypt. We were forced here to choose either one devil or the other devil. So either a dictator or uh, extreme uh, uh, religious uh, military uh, terrorists. So these are the two choices, you know. So I supported the revolution, Jonathan, for out of this field for real love of democracy and freedom. But I saw very soon all these young Egyptians who were beautiful people, uh, full of good intentions, intelligent, uh, heartly, freedom fighters. They left the, the square, went home, thought that the mission accomplished, and left it void for the forces of evil, forces of fascist religious forces to come in and take over. And then these forces forced us back into the dungeons of the Middle Ages. They put another autocratic fascist uh, dictator regime. They violated all the rules of democracy. They violated all the rules of our constitution. So it was not a choice. I'm just like someone who's not going to see something wrong and say it's none of my business. Ibrahim Hegazi is a marketing professor at the American University in Cairo. He believes the party emerged at a crucial time. He never stepped into being in front of uh, the cameras in terms of uh, leadership of um, the, the Free Egyptians uh, political party. But he supported the initiative, he supported uh, liberal thinking because again, Egypt uh, should never be separating between I am a Christian and I am a Muslim. Uh, we live together. We've been together, we build the history together. Nobody can deny either of the two the right to speak, the right to be involved in the decision making process. And I think this was a very, very uh, pointed and timed uh, move. On July the 1st, 2012, Mohamed Morsi was sworn in as Egypt's first freely elected president. However, his one year rule was mired by political controversy and economic instability. Sawiris had spent much of this time in self-imposed exile after the Morsi government hit the family business with extortionate taxes. I was very close from him during his exile period. As you know, he was banned from the country for one, more than one year, he and his family. And he was in uh, between New York, London, uh, Paris and uh, other, other cities. I was with him and his family, his dad's. And I can tell you one thing, he was very, very sad, far from his homeland. He stayed with his mind and heart uh, with Egypt. And uh, the obvious thing, you know, one of the interviews that he made in the United States uh, and Canada, he cried when he was talking about uh, the state of Egypt at that time and how he w wanted to help uh, Egypt. And so that's why I don't think that he left. الأسرة بقى الزوجة والأولاد هل أيضا النقل خارج مصر والابتعاد عن مصر كان سهلا؟ لا طبعا وبعدين يعني مش قادر أقول لك العيال مضايقين جدا عيال مصريين أصليين يعني ما يعرفوش يقعدوا مع ملوخية ومدر يعني كمان أنا بطلع عيالي مصريين بجد ما طلعتهمش خواجات يعني
Morsi had failed to meet the expectations of his countrymen. Once again, the Egyptian people took to the streets. The June 30th uprising was described as the biggest demonstration in the history of mankind. Millions across the country gathered, demanding Morsi's resignation. Sawiris soon returned to Egypt. Along with his brothers, he pledged to invest billions of dollars into the country's economy. The markets responded, and the announcement signaled a positive message for investors. No investor in his calm mind should invest in a country of the people of the country are still scared. Because the people of the country, they know the risks better than the people who are outside. They know the system better. So if they're scared to invest their own money here, why would a foreign investor come and invest here? He should be cautious, you know. So I really believe that the opportunities uh, uh, here now are big. Three years of total chaos. Three years of not a single drop of an investment. The population is growing. Uh, services are deteriorating and, and many companies went bust, valuations are low. For any wise investor, that's the best time to come in now. You know? So when I pledge a billion dollars, okay, I need to put the money somewhere and I took the first opportunity because when I do this, when I invest in this company, it's a listed company, the Egyptian stock exchange takes a different shape. And I, as I was right, it's exactly happened like that. You know? So that was the reason. Najib and his uh, brothers, both of them, um, the other two, the three together, their companies stock in the Egyptian stock market. At least 40% of transactions is related to the three companies. So when investors and uh, stock market uh, players, they look and see the family is coming back, the Orascom, uh, the Suiras family, and the Orascom companies they are coming back to re-inject their funds in Egypt. That's a very, very positive sign for the Egyptians that Egypt now is much better than before. Egypt is welcoming the investment, climate is much better, and that's why he is a, an indicator. The key to this also lies in bringing down the divide between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. And Sawiris has an unorthodox solution to encourage trade. It needs uh, progressive thinking, it needs uh, b uh, uh, alignment with the business community that they should go and, and see opportunities and take uh, and it needs the government of Egypt should issue a, an export credit guarantee like the government should tell the Egyptian business community listen if you go to Africa and invest you cover your commercial problems we will cover you politically it means if there's any poli like what happened to me in Algeria what happened to me in Algeria was purely political so if I had an insurance for my government they would reimburse me for a nationalization or from any attempt like that you know and that we should find mechanisms to encourage the Egyptian business to, uh, to invest there. Whether political and economic stability will return to Egypt is yet to be seen. What's certain is that Sawiris will continue fighting for his country. If someone will ask me, okay, what do you want the world to say about you when you die? Or what, what do you want inscripted on your grave? There is anything inscripted on your grave. So I would like to have the following phrase, which actually two phrases. So one would say, here lies a man that nobody ever managed to bend his arm. The second phrase, which is new actually, because still like last week it was only one phrase. <laughs> the second one is, here lies a man that never uh, hesitated to fight, even at his own cost. <laughs>